Good morning guys from the Driftwood Inn RV Park in Homer, Alaska. Yay! Yeah, it's a beautiful day here. It's a little overcast, but it is what, the middle of October right now and we kind of have Homer to ourselves and that's a great feeling. It's also not really that cold yesterday. It was very chilly this time mm -hmm. of day. This morning, it's yeah. there's no wind and it's lovely out. It is great. And the views here are pretty nice. So those are the RV sites on the left. And then you get down to Catchmack Bay and you can see glaciers off in the distance as well. And check out this old cabin. So this is the historic district and I'm assuming this is a historic building. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's definitely old and historic. But isn't it just like you want to take in every piece of it? This is a great little place to stay. They have rooms over here on this side. You got the office there. Then they have this uh, glassed off deck where you can come in and have a barbecue. And I love that they have rocking chairs where you can sit and watch the ocean. There's more rooms here and more rooms over there. Um, I have been using what they call the RV room, which has showers and laundry, and it was hopping in there this morning. Everybody is in and out of the shower, people are doing laundry, and I am telling you, it is one of the nicest bathrooms, shower rooms, I've ever used in an RV park. Really clean, very nice, highly recommend it. So the plan for the day is to go see some of the more touristy things in Homer during the tourist shoulder season. And when we travel, we were in the lower 48 a lot. Uh, we liked to actually time our visits to places around the tourist main season crowd not being there. <laughs> and it really does make everything just a little more pleasant and okay. peaceful. And you know, even the people in a town are not as high strung because they're not as busy. They're and more likely to just chat with you. Yeah, everything's just a slower pace, and that's kind of what we really enjoy about RVing and traveling. Welcome to the Homer Spit, guys. If you uh, ever find yourself in uh, Homer, definitely come down here. It's kind of uh, one of the more popular tourist areas. Uh, a lot of marine industrial stuff happens here. There's a harbor, pretty much a little bit of everything. And then down at the end, there's a resort. But it's definitely worth a stop because it is actually the world's longest road that's man-made that leads out into ocean waters. So it's four and a half miles long. That's pretty cool in its own right. It is. And at the very end, by Land's End, is also where the Rusty Testy comes into the Homer Terminal. Yep. And then the there's... Ferry. Yeah. There's a lot here, but uh, it's time for lunch. We're starving. So one downside to traveling in the off-season is that you don't always get the biggest selection of uh, places to eat or shop at. Um, and this one's not open either. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to go into town to eat. Well, case in point, guys, uh, we saw the open sign for the uh, coal company place, but they are closed. Uh, but the gift shop is open. And it's another one of the uh, many seafood markets you'll find. So this is one of my favorite places in town to eat. And when the uh, spit was kind of closed down, we decided to come here. Um, I used to fly in and out of Homer a lot. I covered a couple of clinics out in the bay here at Ninwalik and Port Graham, and so pretty much every other month for about three years I flew in and out of Homer. So had a lot of times where either I grabbed something to eat while I was waiting to take off or I would get weathered in to Homer waiting to go out to the villages. So 
Mermaid Cafe was always my favorite stop to make. Is the restaurant not open or? Oh, Only the bookstore? Oh, the open sign is for the bookstore, not the cafe. Oh no! The cafe is gone! Yeah, you know, if this were a TV show, we'd cut all of this part, these parts where we can't find a place to eat out, but you're getting the real thing with us. I am seriously, though, so sad <laughs> that that restaurant is closed. So if you want some real irony, we kind of haven't accomplished much of anything <laughs> and we're right back at the RV park. That's terrible. <laughs> Luckily in Homer, there are lots of favorite places to eat at, so we just keep going down the list. And continuing with my little history of Homer's story, uh, we used to actually order pizzas from Fat Olives, and they would take them over to Smoky Bay or Kachemak Bay, uh, and, and the guys would fly them out on the plane and bring them to us in the... Uh, in the village. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Starving. Good. Thank goodness we finally found something to eat at Fat Olives. I got a calzone and salad and Ben got a chicken torta. This looks really good. Our next destination takes us down East End Road which is the uh, main road out of uh, Homer aside from the Sterling Highway. And keep in mind it does dead end uh, kind of at the end of Kachemak Bay and I think there might even be a couple of unique villages out there along with one of the famous Alaska reality show families, the uh, Kilchers. I don't even know the name of their show. But uh, if you've ever wondered what we think about the Alaska reality shows, it's so set up, staged, and fake, guys. Like, and so much can happen in the editing studio. Obviously, the Kilchers must like what Discovery Channel or whatever is doing for them because they keep having them back out to their homestead, but it is, in the editing studio, you know, you can make an impending sense of doom or, you know, all these conflicts and manipulate the way people actually are, and it's just very twisted, and I hate to say it, like, the people in the editing studio make it seem like their homestead, not that we've watched the show a lot, we may have seen a couple episodes in the beginning, it's like if they don't get this moose, they're gonna die because there's you know nowhere else to get food from. When in fact, if you just head to Homer, there's a safe way. And if you're on hard luck financial times, there's like welfare financial assistance, so you will not starve. But in terms of reality shows, they have to get you engaged, I guess, and make it more Hollywood. We're but, sorry to burst your bubble about it. Yeah, but the. Uh, House Hunters type of shows. Now this goes for all of them. Those are all set up, staged and fake. And we know people up here, because they have the whole Living Alaska shows, and they would uh, like pay people to go and act on these houses. Like they bought them, and or some of those houses, like the comparables that they were looking at, they weren't even for sale. So it is like such a staged, fake, type of art that you know TV has gone to now and that's why I like to think that YouTube is the new reality and probably the best reality well here's a little irony up here on the left is the Arctic cat dealer which is where we bought our red side-by-side -side from many years ago yeah back in 2012 well guys welcome to the Bear Creek winery this is another favorite place in Homer and what's really cool about their wines is that you know we don't grow grapes up here in Alaska so they get their grapes from other sources but they use Alaskan fruits and kind of blend them together to make these really really tasty wines amazing and the grounds here are beautiful they've done a lot of uh, landscape work since we have uh, been here last do you notice what's missing from the landscape Benjamin yes mm -hmm. the world's most awesome swing there's some trivia that you don't know um, <laughs> we were here with friends and we were playing on this swing and they I'll know, insert they the knew clip who we were with, we were with yeah, Russ, and Russ and Christine yeah um, I'll insert the clip here Well,
Well, needless to say, that little event when I fell off the swing. You had a compression fracture of your vertebrae. And me being kind of stubborn, I just kind of muscled through it for a while. You it, walked it off for like six months. Yeah, and then, you know, the voice of reason kind of kicked in and said, we need to go get an MRI. Mm -hmm. And ends up that there was a uh, hairline fracture? No, or compression fra okay. fracture. So, like, the bones went crunch and broke one of, and crunched one of the vertebrae. What she said. And for the record, I am not the reason why they took the swing down. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but it wasn't me. Okay, guys, so the way it works is it's $5 per person for a tasting. And then that $5 is applied to your first bottle of wine. And then you just go down their list and write down your choices. All right, Blue Zen is a California white Zinfandel and Alaskan blueberries. And then golden raspberry is 100% Alaskan golden raspberries. All right, this is 100% Alaskan black currants. There's no grape in this one. There you go. Wild berry is strawberry, blueberry, raspberry, and rhubarb, a little bit of everything. Yeah. And the black raspberry has Merlot grape blend in it. All right, so with the pork, I'm gonna take a sip. I'll give you some chocolate to pair with it and then sip it again after the chocolate. So sip it first so you can taste it. And then eat your chocolate and then sip it again after. Mm. Ports are so good. Mm -hmm. You look like you're taking pills when you pick <laughs> <laughs> back those M&Ms. Take your chocolate now, Benjamin. Mm. Wash it down. <laughs> That's good stuff. Is that like a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down? <laughs> That's like sugar and sugar makes the medicine yeah, go right. down. <laughs> Okay, decision time. I know. We're gonna buy a bottle of wine. What's it gonna be? Do, I, do, 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 I really like the uh, apple one. That green apple at the end? Yeah, it's not really like a wine, but it's a great fall flavor. Oh, it's flavor. so delicious. And it's um, not a regular wine that we can get outside of their, you know, it's a seasonal wine. So when you find yourself up here, you can uh, actually get the Bear Creek wines in almost all of the liquor stores. They have an excellent distribution and it's a great opportunity to taste their products. Another pleasurable visit to the Bear Creek Winery. Okay. Yeah, you made a good point. We should stay at these cabins once. It would be a lot of fun. They are so cute. And really it's open in the winter. Yeah. We just realized that we were supposed to have a video published about 20 minutes ago and it didn't go so Ben checked and he accidentally set it to publish tomorrow. So he's running back to fix that. I don't know why, but you can't change your publish date on the YouTube app, and so you have to do it on a computer. He did not want to come here, which is the new Blackberry Bog that we talked about earlier. So I said, drop me off here, and I'll look around while you go fix the video, and then he's not tortured while I look around, and, and also I'm not driven nuts by him on my heels while I look around in the store. Well, since this has turned into like a random impromptu tour of Homer, I thought I'd show you something that was really cool when I first saw it. This is the Homer High School. It looks like some mountain lodge. And how many high schools do you know of that have a glacier view from the football field? What's really neat is the classrooms also come with an ocean view. Well, and here's the best part I've always thought about the high school. How many schools do you know of that have skeletons of whales right in the entry? You're like, I would have loved to have gone to a high school like this. So Ben showed you the beautiful Homer High School and how they decorated it. Now we're gonna show you the Homer Public Library. I used to love to come to this place and sit when I was waiting for the planes to go out. And uh, I'm not dissing my town, but I was sorely disappointed with the new Seward Library. But they made the building look so pretty. Yeah, but, but the, the inside, inside was, was so not. So utilitarian. Yes. And once you've been in here, you'll understand why I anticipated them building something like this. Uh, 
Uh, it didn't look like it usually does today because they're having a book fair, so all of the chairs were kind of pushed out of the way, but the area with the fireplace and the windows is a wonderful, like really inviting you to come in and sit down and read a book on a cold winter day and watch it snow. It's very appealing. I don't know about you guys, but I'm running out of steam and I think a Saturday afternoon nap is coming. Hey, I've never seen this one before. Yeah, drinking water dispenser. And a lot of people have dry cabins and they need to uh, haul their own water. That makes living a lot of work. At least we can like pull up to a place and get water. But these folks have to like put it in their vehicle and then put it in their house. It's gonna be a movie rental afternoon. So thanks for uh, hanging out with us and I hope you're having a great weekend and we will see you tomorrow.